Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're gonna talk about the next section of this chapter, which is the full capacity sales of fixed assets. And so far, up until this point, the examples we've done, a big assumption that we've been making is that assets are proportionate to sales or assets vary with sales. However, in reality, this is not always going to be true. So let's illustrate this through an example. So let's say that you own a house and that's your only asset. The house has 10 rooms and each room is rented out for $1,000. Now let's say in the present moment, out of the 10 rooms, eight are rented out and two are vacant. So that means that currently your house is only operating at 80% of its capacity, eight divided by 10. So currently your sales or your revenue is eight rooms are rented out times $1,000 of rent per room. So currently your sales are $8,000 for your house. However, your potential sales or your full capacity sales can be $10,000 because if all the rooms are rented out, the total number of rooms of 10, 10 times 1,000 rent per room would give us a potential full capacity sales figure of $10,000. So we can potentially increase our sales currently without increasing any assets. So to actually find out the potential increase in sales, we would use this general formula that I've introduced in other videos. So the new amount minus the old amount all over the old amount. So the new amount of 10,000 minus the old sales amount of 8,000 all over 8,000 gives us a potential increase in sales we can have of 25%. Now at the same time to achieve that 25% potential increase in sales, how much do we have to increase the assets? Well, it's the same house, so we don't have to increase the assets at all. So there's a 0% increase in assets. And so notice how with these two figures, in this example, we already disproved this assumption. Assets are proportionate to sales, the assumption we've been making all along so far up until this point. Because sales in this case grew 25%, and usually what would happen in previous examples is the assets would have to grow 25% as well. But in this case, we didn't have to grow the assets at all because they were only operating at 80% capacity. So the reason why in previous examples that assets were proportionate to sales is because we assumed that the assets were operating at full capacity. But in reality, that's not always going to happen. Assets aren't always going to be operating at full capacity. So we'll go over some examples in the future where we'll deal with that problem. However, I just wanted to start off with this simple example to show you how we can disprove that assumption we've been making all along where assets are proportionate to sales. Now, what if you want to grow your sales by more than 25% from your current sales of 8,000? What's going to happen then? So let's say you want to grow them by 50%. Well, if you wanna grow them by 50% from 8,000, that means that they're gonna grow by 4,000 so they can grow up to 12,000. However, your house currently only has 10 rooms. So if you wanna grow sales past this amount, then you're going to have to increase your assets then. Up to 25%, you don't have to because you're only operating at 80% capacity, but anything after 25%, you're going to have to increase your assets, whether that's buying a new house or maybe making an addition to this house. Either way, your assets are going to have to increase. Now, one more thing I wanna mention before finishing off this video is if you look at the title, it says full capacity sales of fixed assets. And so far, full capacity sales we've talked about However, we haven't really talked about fixed assets. We've talked about having an asset, a house, but we haven't really differentiated fixed assets from total assets, from current assets, etc. And so far, we've just been dealing with that general category of assets in our examples. So when we say assets are proportionate to sales, we've been growing that total assets figure by how much the sales have been growing when we're making our pro forma balance sheets. However, assets are usually categorized into current assets and fixed assets, where current assets are anything short term. So stuff like cash, for example, would be a current asset. And then fixed assets is anything long term. So things like buildings or houses. And what you're gonna notice in future examples is that the current assets portion 
of the balance sheet is usually going to be proportionate to sales because that makes sense. As your sales increase, you're probably going to be getting more cash. So there's going to be some type of proportion for current assets. However, fixed assets aren't always going to be proportionate to sales because sometimes they're not going to be operating to their full capacity like we did in this example. So just pay attention to that in future examples. In videos, I'll definitely mention this but uh, just keep it in mind when you're reading your textbook or doing examples yourself. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.